In this video, I'll be talking about the enthalpy in a physical change. I talked about the enthalpy of formation in a previous video, but that doesn't have much to do with this kind of enthalpy. So, enthalpy in a physical change. Well, what I mean by physical change is simply a state transition. So, state transition. From a liquid to a gas, from a solid to a liquid, or vice versa. So, one of the most important things you have to know about state transitions is that temperature remains constant. So, during a phase change or state transition, there are many names for it. Phase change. The temperature doesn't change. So the temperature remains constant. Well, if we know that in a graph, we'll be able to to recognize where a straight transition is occurring in a in just in a, in a given graph of temperature and, and time or heat. Uh, so given that the temperature remains constant, all, all that will occur in a, in a phase change is a lot of heat flow, which is the definition of, of enthalpy. So to be able to calculate the heat flow in a phase transition, we cannot use our, cal our calorimeter equations that the MCAT equation and the negative C delta D equation. So we have to use something different. And so we're introducing a new formula used to calculate the heat flow in a phase transition. And that is the heat flow of the reaction. is going to be the number is going to be equal to the number of moles times the change in enthalpy of the transition. And so let's identify H. Q is heat flow. Or just heat. The N is the number of moles. And the delta H transition that will be the the enthalpy of the phase change. So it could be, for example, the enthalpy of fusion, the enthalpy of vaporization, or or any kind of phase change. So I mentioned before a graph in which we will be able to recognize when a state transition is occurring. So I was able to find the graph, believe me it's better than me drawing it. Alright, there we go. So we said that when a phase change a state a state transition is occurring, our temperature will be constant. So just by identifying that the temperature is here, we see that the only place in which the temperature is constant is this place this place meaning that the state transition doesn't occur there so if it's going this way it's going to be melting and if it's going this way it's going to vaporize now if we look at it from the other side it's going to lose here, right? So it's going to go condense here. Simply freeze here. Oh, like you can just identify here that this section is a solid, this section is a liquid. But doesn't look at all mm, liquid and this is just a gas 
So, well, these graphs are fairly easy to identify when a state of transition is occurring. And as I said, in these locations, these locations, we'll be using our new formula. Because it's a transition, we can also call it the Q of transition uh, N delta H. And in this case, it's melting, so it's going to be the delta H of melting. Or to call it, to call it correctly, just the delta H of fusion. That is, that's when a, something melts, it's fusing. But in the cases in which there's no phase change, like in this case, we'll have to use our, our MCAT equation. MC delta T. So let's solve a problem. These problems can be a little long, but if you're able to organize it properly, it'll, it'll, it'll be fairly easy. So in this problem, we have that sulfur dioxide. We're talking about sulfur dioxide. And they will usually give you, you know, they will most definitely give you a table of values. So this one is going to be the more mass, perfect removal, then the melting point, the boiling point, the delta H of fusion first, that's in kilojoules per mole. The boiling point in the poles is in degrees Celsius. There are another boiling point in degrees Celsius as well. And we, they also give, there's a little fit here. We, I'm going to write the values here. I'm going to continue the graph here. Uh, the table here. The delta H of vaporization that is also going to be in kilojoules per mole. I don't know what's wrong with my handwriting. Uh, the heat capacity when we have the sulfur dioxide in its liquid state and that is going to be in joules grams to resolve so it's a specific it's the specific heat and the same when it's put this case in it, it's in its gaseous phase so, specific heat. Now let's plug in the values. The molar mass is 64.07. The melting point is minus 73. The boiling point is minus 10. The delta H of fusion is 8.619. The delta H of vaporization is 25.73. It's specific heat as a liquid is 0 0.995, and the specific heat as a gas is 0 0.622. So just to separate each. So that's all. That that's the values they give us. One. So what the question is, is how much heat is required to convert a thousand kilograms of sulfur dioxide from its melting point to 60 degrees Celsius. So we have a mass of a thousand kilograms. We want to convert it from melting point to 60 degrees Celsius. So we'll go from minus 73 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. And now you'll see why I didn't want to draw the previous graph. So I, ha I have to draw this graph. It's going to be... Our temperature here and our heat added here. So this is going to be temperature in degrees Celsius. This is going to be our heat as it progresses. So it said that we wanted to go from our melting point that's going to be minus 73 
and you won't you won't, it won't really matter uh like the value if it's if it's below the axis or whatever just just drawing it properly is is what matters so negative 73 I don't know what is happening okay so if we start from its melting point that means it's going it's it's melting right now so it's a phase change so let's it's just a straight line because it's a phase change and I'm going to write an arrow here and then it has to go from minus 73 to 60 so let's write 60 up here from it to go from to to 60 degrees Celsius we know that that is uh, where is above its boiling point so it has to go through another phase change before so it has to go first to 10 degree, to minus 10 degrees Celsius that is going to be like this until we get to the 10 degrees Celsius to minus 10 and that's when it's going to vaporize right so that is another phase change it's going to vaporize so let me write here it's melting here and here is vaporizing and then just because it's still in minus 10 because it's vaporizing it still has to go to one more step but it doesn't its face doesn't change anymore it's or is ready vapor it can't change so there we go we got we went from minus minus seventy three to sixty degrees Celsius, and this this right here just means as the reaction goes on, it will gain heat. And now the we're putting the numbers in is just what remains. This is really the hardest part. So let's go here. We said that the first thing you'll do is it's going to melt. So our first equation is going to be that Q1 is equal to N delta H so it's the delta H of fusion it's melting right and that is our first equation then our second equation would be when it goes through this part so it's just going to be the MCAT equation M C delta T but this C is going to be the specific heat of SO2 as a liquid be careful with that that is our second equation. Then we go through another phase change, so n delta h, but this time it vaporizes, so it's of it's the delta h of vaporization. And finally, our last step would be again this part. So it's just mcat mc, but this is the SO2 of a gas delta t. So the first thing to solve it is that. The first thing is we see is that we need the number of moles in half of the equation, so just compute that. We said it's a thousand kilograms, and that would be about fifteen six zero seven point nine grams per mole. So you can use that in all of the values. Let's do it the first one. So Q one will be equal to. 15,607.9 moles times the delta H of fusion so that's going to be 8.619 kilojoules per mole 8.619 kilojoules per mole and just that will give us one three four five two five kilojoules and then q2 would be a million grams because it's not in kilograms times this heat the specific heat capacity which is 0 0.995 joules gram degree Celsius so that's why we had to change it to grams this goal 
and the delta t would be minus 10 degrees Celsius minus minus 73 degrees Celsius and this is because it is the final temperature the final minus the initial temperature and that would just give us 6.26 times 10 to the 7 and just to have in kilojoules it would be 6.26 times 10 to the 4th kilojoules well using the, using the same process you can obtain Q3 and Q4 that is just going to be Q3 is equal to 607.9 moles times the delta H of vaporization that's just 25.723 kilojoules per mole from our data at the beginning and Q3 is equal to 401591 kilojoules and the last one would be the Q4 which is using the MCAT equation a thousand as mil, a million grams sorry uh, the C of the specific heat of the gas is just 0 0.622 0 0.622 joules grams degrees Celsius and finally, the delta T in this case would be our final temperature is 60 degrees Celsius minus our initial temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. And that gives us 4.35 times 10 to the 7 joules or 4.35 times 10 to the 4 kilojoules. Now we have all of our heat just adding them up would be the last step our total heat would be equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4 and that would be 642216 kilojoules and that's it for the enthalpy of a physical change